the Dodge Nitro is the carrier of the Chrysler KA platform and a relative of the Jeep Liberty, but with a reduced off-road potential. By the way, the quieter, if not boring, in short Liberty was sold at home, in the USA, twice as good as the Nitro, perhaps precisely due to the branded features of the all-wheel drive. Dodge, in turn, was more original and bright, to match the name. The car debuted in 2006, and it was the first years of market life that became the most successful for it. After three years, sales slightly decreased and no longer grew, so by the end of 2011, the crossover career came to an end. The daring brick was replaced by the understandable and modest Jeep Cherokee and Dodge Journey. Nitro is a car with a load-bearing body, there is no frame here, and this is good, the floor here is high even without it, which even made it necessary to equip the car with standard running boards. The rarity of the model, at the time of writing, there were only 30 cars for sale on a veto, and its image status in Russia benefit the state of the body, as well as not too high cross-country ability. Nitro is not even geometrically adapted to forcing off-road. Clearance of 210 mm does not help with such a massive lip of the front bumper, so the approach angle is only 17 degrees. But such a low geometric cross-country ability promises the opportunity to find a car that almost never left the asphalt. The front bumper, however, is still worth a look. The owners complain that this is not a car, but a bulldozer, and damage from snowdrifts and curbs appears even without off-road rides. Otherwise, the state of the body should not disappoint, it has no specific problems, and the owners usually struggle with age-related ones. The square profile promises guaranteed stone chips on the hood and windshield frame, as well as on the edge of the roof. Here, on the roof, it is worth examining the niche of the hatch, if any, if lubrication is rare here, and the drains are clogged, corrosion also climbs confidently from under the guides. The bottoms of the doors rust noticeably, and in running cars, the paint leaves in large stripes along the inner edge, exposing loose rust. In addition, sometimes corrosion creeps out from under the door hinges, although fasteners are usually to blame. It is better to tug on the inside door handles immediately upon inspection, in fact, they are more fragile than they seem, and sometimes there are cable breaks. By the way, speaking about the cabin, we can mention the funny illness of nitro, for many, the heater eventually begins to heat only the passenger side of the cabin, contemptuously blowing cold on the driver, the reason usually lies in the clogged heater radiator and is solved by flushing it. The fifth door is traditionally marked by problems in the license plate niche, and paint often begins to bubble around the rear wiper mount. The lower edge of the trunk lid is also wiped against the bumper, ice, and snow, and if this area is not tinted, rust will not make you ask twice for its appearance. Well, in the trunk itself, it is worth evaluating the performance of the branded, retractable floor, load NGO. This shelf holds up to 180 kilograms, and this is what sometimes fails it. Thresholds are covered with plastic and additionally protected by steps, but it's definitely worth looking under them, because moisture and dirt accumulate under this protection. Massive wheel arches, by the way, are also plastic, so the previous advice fully applies to both the space under them and the joint zone, they are mounted on clips and corrosion may well develop in the mounting holes. Chrome is a mandatory companion of the American crossover, and there is plenty of it in front, so typical problems with clouding and peeling are quite relevant. The bottom should not be surprising, as we have already said, these machines do not poke their nose into the mud, and the limits of geometric possibilities are quickly reached, so it is unlikely to meet clods of dried mud in the cavities and peeled factory anti-gravity. Nevertheless, owners, especially American ones, were frightened by the suspension, rear axle, and exhaust system, which were covered with rust within a year or two after purchase. This, of course, is not a serious problem, but it is worth assessing the condition of the attachment points and the fasteners themselves at least to predict the repair of the chassis. The nitro suspension is not able to surprise with advanced solutions, there are no typical American chips like air bellows, auto leveling body systems, and so on. The front suspension is an independent double wishbone, the rear is a continuous axle, which is fixed by a five-link design. Of course, many original spare parts, including delivery, are expensive. For the front wishbones they ask for 15 to 20,000, for the lower ones, up to 30, and the simple rear levers and rods cost 5 to 7,000 apiece. However, for all this there are both substitutes and replaceable silent blocks, and shock absorbers and stabilizer struts, even in the original version, will cost 3 to 4,000 rubles. In general, there is nothing to be afraid of in the chassis, 
the only difficulty out of habit can only be the search and order of spare parts and a wide range of prices from different sellers. The power steering does not collect many complaints about the resource and usually serves its 150 to 200,000, and in the future it is suitable for both repair and replacement. Instead of a new rail for 60,000, you can buy a restored one for 20 to 25. Only some surprise can upset. For example, due to rarity, 30,000 are asked for an intermediate steering shaft, so knocks in the universal joint will either lead to disassembly or to chagrin. But with the brakes everything is simpler. They are disc in a circle and do not stand out in anything special. The original discs cost five to seven thousand apiece, and the rear non-ventilated ones turn out to be no cheaper than the ventilated front ones, although substitutes successfully solve this issue. It is also worth checking the operation of the drum parking brake with pads inside the disc in order to understand in advance whether you will have to lay money on its maintenance. Unlike the related Jeep Liberty, the Nitro received a very modest off-road arsenal hardwired all-wheel drive via the NB143 single-stage chain transfer case. In the US, rear-wheel drive versions of the crossover were generally sold, but only all-wheel drive were supplied to us. In the absence of a lower row and wheel locks that the electronics are trying to imitate, movement on loose surfaces usually continues until the first stop, after which Dodge can no longer move. All this, however, does not negate the need to listen to the Rizdatka for noise, assess the condition of the cardans and drive shafts. Front wheel drives, for example, are expensive, 15 to 20,000, but there are no high quality substitutes. The price of cardan shafts is traditionally monstrous, 60 to 80,000, which makes you be attentive to their integrity, since it will also not be easy to look for apart from disassembly. The Nitro had three transmissions, one manual and two automatic. It's unrealistic to find a car on the mechanics with us so there's not much to say about it, although it didn't become famous for any bad deeds. But the automatic transmission option depends on the engine. A four-speed gearbox of Chrysler's own design with the 42 RLE index was combined with a diesel engine and a gasoline 3.7-liter V6, and the most powerful 4-liter engine was equipped with a Mercedes 5-speed 5G Tronic 722.6 on Dodge and other Americans, referred to as W5A580. By the way, in terms of the set of automatic transmissions, this crossover is identical to the Challenger muscle car, but a different style of operation promises more chances for a long life of the transmission. The American Box 42 RLE in the early years often scared the owners with vibrations and shocks, which is why in the USA, for example, they even changed torque converters under warranty. However, in general, the box is still quite reliable and its disadvantage can only be considered a low prevalence in Russia, which is why it is not as well mastered in repairs as many others. Subject to an oil change every 50 to 70,000 kilometers, it will pass its 200 to 250,000, after which you will have to look for a service where you are familiar with the Americans. In addition, it is worth monitoring the tightness of the oil lines to the oil cooler. Leaks will not lead to good, gradually reducing the oil level in the box. The second version of the automatic transmission, the Mercedes 722.6, is an even more reliable and proven unit, which, in addition, is well known to specialized services and is maintainable, although not cheap to repair. With normal maintenance, it also easily travels 250 and even more than a thousand kilometers before the first service. The main thing is to remember that dirty and burnt oil significantly reduces its resource, and the torque converter lockup works here just as actively as on the American four stage. It's not worth saving on box diagnostics before buying, but it's best to change the oil prophylactically immediately after purchasing the car. Nitro had three engines, of which two were officially presented in Russia, a 2.8 liter diesel and a 3.7 liter V6 petrol. However, cars with the top end 4 liter V6 petrol are now on sale no less. The base gasoline engine produces 205 horsepower, and 315 newton meters of torque for active driving especially considering the four-speed automatic it is not enough but you can't call it sluggish either structurally this is a v6 with a cast iron block and aluminum heads overhead but with one camshaft in the block head and two valves per cylinder timing drive chain with individual chains for each camshaft the original timing kit costs 45 to 50 thousand rubles and the non-original one from cloys costs 30 to 35 thousand which, coupled with the cost of work, makes some people think that the chain can last 200 to 250,000 kilometers, or even more, 
although in fact it shouldn't be abused. The 4-liter V6 belongs to a different family. The block here is also cast iron, and there is only one camshaft in the blockhead. However, the camber angle is not 90, but 60 degrees. There are already four valves per cylinder, and the timing drive is belt-driven. This, of course, has a positive effect on the cost of maintenance, although fuel consumption of 20 liters per hundred and a transport tax of almost 40,000 rubles a year for 258 horsepower put an end to trying to save money. Against this background, the Italian diesel RA428 with 177 horsepower from VM Motori seems to be a reasonable alternative, and it is partly true until it comes to repair. Here, the prices of fuel equipment will mainly surprise, for example, piezoelectric nozzles cost 40 to 50,000 rubles apiece, and a fuel pump, under 100,000. A restored turbine can be found for 30,000, which, against this background, is not so expensive. In general, it is worth choosing a diesel engine even more carefully, and preferably with an understanding of where to repair it, and how to save money at the same time. Well, now, having briefly dealt with the features of this car, you can try to choose the best option for buying. As we remember, 4-liter cars will have to pay an inhumane transport tax, and diesel is expensive to repair, so if you buy nitro as a car for several years, not months, the most logical choice would be to choose an instance with a 3.7-liter gasoline V6. The model, due to its rarity, is not very popular with car thieves, but it's still worth checking the history of the car you like to find out the mileage registered in the past and make sure that there are no encumbrances and restrictions, this can be done using special services, such as Aptotica. And if you manage to find a car with low mileage and a transparent service history, something like this, then decent fuel consumption and an American-style Spartan interior are more than offset by the pleasure of owning a rare and interesting car.